concussion coming off that thing standing right here. SIG fans have an almost religious reverence toward their handguns, coddling them as if they were their firstborn child. Yes, they're expensive, and you immediately think Navy SEAL are just pure badness, but that doesn't completely explain the cult following. In fact, spec-wise, there isn't a whole lot there that would usually warrant such enthusiasm. But then, you shoot one. This is the SIG P229, one of my all-time favorites. This little tank, it's as robust as they come. I feel like if my house blew up, the only thing alive would be some cockroaches in my cigs. The notion hits you immediately as you lift up the 229, largely due to the beefy weight. We're talking an honest 30, up to 40 ounces if you opt for the solid carbon steel frame over the alloy. But the extra weight from going all steel and alloy is great if you're just out blasting with your buddies, and it balances very naturally. Although heavier than the polymer wonders, all day concealed carry wasn't an issue with me due to the relatively compact size, very similar to a Glock 19 or 23. The P229 is essentially identical to the P228, though the 228 can also take 226 magazines and for a time it had ceased civilian sales. Also the 229 has a milled slide for the higher slide velocities, being built for the more powerful cartridge of the 40 Smith & Wesson. It also has the distinction of being the first production handgun to chamber 357 SIG, which is pretty cool. When speaking ergonomics, I dig it, with the concession that my hands are larger than most. The grip is obviously too large for my wife, and if you have smaller hands, it's probably going to be a problem for you as well. You might notice that the edges around the trigger guard are on the sharp side. I took some fine grit sandpaper and a little elbow grease and softened mine up a bit. That helped to make those long trips to the range much more enjoyable because of where it contacted my hand. Now the bore axis on SIGs is notoriously high, though rarely burdensome. Now it's possible that you could notice in 40 and 45 a slight increase in those shot intervals, and if you're really hawking it, you might feel a little bit more felt recoil. But 9mm like this one right here, I can't tell a difference in my shot times at all. And unless you're a robot, you probably won't notice it either. Now SIG did get with the program and increase their standard mag capacities. Once with only 13 rounds in 9mm and 10 in 40 Smith & Wesson or 357 SIG, they're now a solid 15 and 12 rounds, flush sitting inside the mag well, much more respectable. They're generally solid mags produced by Metgar, although there are others produced by Checkmate and they don't have the same reputation. Needless to say, if you buy a SIG today, it should come with a pair of reliable long-lasting magazines. And those extra mags are always affordable and available through Metgar. If you're going to spring for just one option on the 229, I highly recommend the short reset trigger. Beaver tails, grips, and Serico, they're all nice, but none of that will improve the functionality the way the SRT trigger will. It's night and day over the stock trigger, reducing reset travel by up to 60%, and it's crisp and audible. That decreased trigger travel makes fast follow-up shots a breeze and really helps to stay on target as well. On the flip side, the stock double action is relatively nice, coming in at an expectedly heavy 10 pounds. In single action, that drops to a pleasant 4.5 pounds. Check out this trigger right here. One quirky design feature, if you get a 229R, a railed version, is that the 1913 rail isn't exactly standard. It has a weird curve to the rail. It looks pretty nice, but it can cause some incompatibility with some accessories. So before you purchase your light or laser, make sure that it's going to work with this gun. Some shooters also take issue with the design change with the extractor. Once a short and very reliable version, it's now much longer. I've never had any problems with it, but there are reports of more frequent failures. Now one completely insignificant thing that just drives me crazy for some reason is the bluing on these guns. It rubs off like finger paint. You can bring home a brand new gun and after some dry fire practice and racking the slide a couple times, you're already going to notice the bare metal showing through. If it was already handled at the gun shop by customers before it was sold, it's likely it already looks like it's had a couple hundred rounds through it. Yeah, I'm going all stickler on this, but when you pay such good money for a handgun, you expect little aspects like the finish to wear hard. And that's just not the case with the SIGs that I've owned. 
The controls do lag behind a little in the ubiquitous ambi control spectrum. It's basically designed directly for right-handed shooters, so lefties are going to have to adjust to the right-handed mag and slide releases. That said, they're both activated easily and positively while sitting relatively flush to the gun. It does come with a decocker right here. As long as the trigger isn't depressed, the hammer is always safe to fall. There's this internal safety that blocks the firing pin. That's pretty nice to have if you ever desire to go back to double action from single action without the inherent risk of pulling the trigger while you lower the hammer. Besides that, the 229 is thankfully relatively devoid of those frivolous extra safeties that I think in most situations is detrimental to self-defense weapons. Another note with this alloy frame right here, adjustable back straps just aren't going to be an option. Now if your SIG came with the basic stock sights, they are serviceable, but I really love my night sights. Many SIGs already ship with them, and also if you plan on a little bit more speed, a fiber optic front sight with a weapon light are a great option on this platform. There's tons of options for SIGs, so you're not going to be disappointed. You can find what you need. As you can see, I threw on a pair of these great G10 grips. Not only do they look awesome, but they really add to the traction when your palms get a little bit sweaty. Again, with the grips, there are enough options out there to fit any hand or texture preference, so accessories are abundant with the 229. In full transparency, I have to admit that part of the massive appeal of the P229 for me is the aesthetics. This is one of those handguns that looks as though it was designed to intimidate and inspire, man. It's just rugged, streamlined at the same time, and it reeks of quality. One of the newer features found on many 229s that I do like are the front serrations. It's very handy for me when I'm practicing my reloads. In just certain situations, I like to have those as a backup. Field stripping uses the common takedown lever. It's as simple as most modern handguns. The captive recoil spring, guide rod combo, and barrel removal is all going to be very familiar. So how does it shoot? In a word, easily. For me, it likes to point right at the target. I never feel as though I have to muscle it anywhere, and that's ideal. It's more than combat accurate and would be at home in most any situation. This is when you really need to shoot for yourself to understand. I mentioned that the dimensions are similar to that of the Glock 19. Despite the shorter stature, when shooting the difference between it and the full size 226 is very little. I feel like it conceals very easily inside the waist and it's an all day carry option despite the extra weight from the alloy frame. I haven't carried a version with a beaver tail but I imagine it wouldn't be that big of an issue. The SIG was built from the ground up for reliable hard use. It will last and it will shoot whatever you throw at it. I ran all sorts of tool ammo and wolf functioned almost 100%. I did have one stove pipe after about 250 rounds. Besides that my lightly charged hand loads went off without issue in all the factory brass that I ran through it has been perfect. Over the years, I don't really recall any other stoppages. If you bought your SIG brand new, you're going to have a limited lifetime warranty, which nowadays I expect from these high quality gun manufacturers. So good job, SIG. The value is certainly subjective. The gun is pricey, but you get a solid quality machine proven firearm. Unless you opt for one of the more purely aesthetically pleasing models, which don't get me wrong, I really like, I would say the cost is worth it. The P229 screams, go to war gun. Thanks for checking out another Doomsday Brothers review. Hit that subscribe button if you feel so inclined.